It's a gloomy Friday here on uh, Cape Cod, Cheech. Terrible. It's a gloomy Friday for a couple reasons. One, this is our final Northeast Offshore Report, which we've been doing you know, since July. You know, We partnered with Sirius XM Marine. They helped outfit the on-the-water regulator. We used them to get on some great tuna bites, and we, uh, you know, they've been our partner through these reports. It's been great working with them. So uh, I'm going to miss doing these every Friday with you. And it's also a gloomy Friday because the Helen H. Offshore trip that we've been talking about since like the first one of these reports. <laughs> like, I, If we go back to like the July 7th report, I bet it's like, you and I are like, well, we're going sword fishing on September 39th. No, that's not even a real date. That's how upset yeah, I am. That's basically when the trip is going. It's <laughs> that's just what, that. That's no, what they rescheduled it for. Yeah. September 30th. Yeah, I, today's the 29th. So it got canceled because this never-ending northeast wind continues to plague us in the northeast. Now, there has <sighs> been some weather windows where... Uh, some friends of ours got out off the Outer Cape looking for bluefin tuna, and I heard there are some tuna still kicking around on the Outer Cape, Stellwagen, Provincetown area, but surprisingly, there's a good number of false albacore out there. Yeah, that is kind of odd. Um, and, you know, you kind of said it like like this is an end of the of the offshore season. It's definitely There's definitely plenty of... Lots of innings left yeah. in the offshore. This is the final offshore report, but the offshore fishing is going to carry on through December. I mean, one year, if you have the weather and you have the water, you can get out to the canyons. We ran a report years ago where it was a pretty mild December. Some guys got out and it was, I think it was mid-December. They went out and trolled the elephant tuna. They all had Santa hats on and had I a tremendous that. canyon trip. So... That fishing isn't good. We just need the weather to cooperate. Yeah. The bluefin fishing is, it was good. It was starting to set up a little yeah. bit there. It, it literally played out like we we had hoped. We knew that that storm, I forget her name, but uh, she came in with a whimper and uh, didn't really like do anything major, which is great. But the one thing that Lee, Lee did do is it's, what it's, the mate so from Lee the was, Helen Lee H. was a female to you? You thought Lee was a female? Yeah, she, I just, no comment. But anyways, <laughs> Lee, that miserable, miserable, miserable woman, um, she uh, she did what we wanted her to do. She didn't do major damage. And we were talking with Matt, from the mate from the Helen H, before Lee's arrival. And he goes, you know what? There's been some yellowfin. They've been kind of picky. They're on krill. There's a ton of life out there, a ton of whales. Um you know, what we really need is this storm to come in and blow all of that out of the canyon and allow that fall, those fall patterns to set up. And as soon as that happened, you saw hard edges on the temp breaks. And it was like, oh, game on. We're going for the harvest moon. Jimmy and Cheech are going to basically have a sword measuring contest and uh, <laughs> both stick a couple of swordfish. Mine was going to be a pumpkin sword. I was already told about it. It would have matched my shirt. And life was going to be great. But instead... I, I was already thinking, like, I'm going to send my sword bill down to this lady in Louisiana who engraves them. Maybe I'd do it for you for a birthday gift. I, I was way too excited. I knew it was getting canceled. The, the second I got so excited yeah. for it. And we had a big group. My friend Kyle Kennedy, my old friend Jerry Sullivan. You had your brother going. Yeah. It was... It was going to be, and, and that's one of It was like 14 of us going. That's the best part about a party boat trip, too, is that you can get together so many different people. And even when you don't know people on yeah. head boats, they're, uh, I mean, that's why we did At The Rail. I, I'm, I'm starting to, uh, to, to bark up the, the Helen H. tree. Um, word has been sent up to the top of command to, uh, to, to put together a, an entire trip. Like, I want the whole boat, and we'll go and get, you know, 28 people. And just have a party out there on the edge um, next fall. So, unfortunately, instead of prepping for an epic trip um, to check the swordfish box, I, I just I, I just went and you know buried my face in in what's the best breakfast sandwich on the planet, which you know they don't call it comfort food for nothing. But um, shout out to Wicked and Wood for for making literally the best breakfast sandwich on the planet for you locals. East Falmouth, it's a barbecue truck, opens at noon. Look, they're not even sponsored. They even give you doesn't a free matter. sandwich. It doesn't matter. It's that good. It's brisket, candied bacon, little chipotle aioli, some runny yolk, little maple syrup on a Portuguese roll. Cheese, come on. 
Uh, That's uh, what I drowned my sorrows in. This isn't what the people came here for. No. So. But that's what they're getting. Once the wind finally eventually subsides, we will definitely find yellowfin tuna in the canyons. The Hudson's going to be loaded. Atlantis, Veach. You're start, uh, talking to um, Joe Huckmeyer of the Hell and H. He said that that progression in the fall this time of year, the fish move west. So you might have more fish to the east. We already had a ton of fish in our canyons. So they shouldn't go anywhere. You just need to get out there to get them. Bluefin tuna fishing was setting up. That should resume. I don't know where. I haven't heard a ton on on them. Like I said, the guys who were going out to like the, the inshore tuna grounds off the Cape were seeing more in the way of Albies and not seeing so much in yeah. terms of bluefin. Now, when it comes to bait, I heard it was sand eels, that the tuna were, were still eating sand eels. Hadn't heard about butterfish yet, but I think that's that's bound to happen too. Maybe after this blow, there were butterfish in the Cape Cod Canal, uh, this week, there was actually a really good bite in the canal where some stripers and bluefish got on butters and some other uh, some big stuff. I've seen, it, what's funny, stripers can even get picky on butterfish in yeah. the canal. I've seen, I, I remember um, Point Jude Lures used to make a butterfish tin that I, I always had on hand when you, we would see them more regularly in the uh, you know in surf fishing range. And it was like almost perfectly round, but it did work. It worked well. Yeah, I mean, so it's the end of september and let's kind of take it from north to south on what that playbook is to to finish off your your offshore season um this is going to be kind of forward looking and i don't know I'll, I'll take you know obviously the northern grounds um we have had an absence of small fish um sometimes well east of of style wagon in like 500 feet of water you get that afternoon run of like little tiny footballs out there and the same thing earlier in the day on the inshore ledges and you know it varies from year to year but these can be true footballs like those 40 50 pounders those are the toughest ones they're to catch, so dude. tough to hook but i think you know the play there is a tuna great epoxy um running gun style and then obviously all those big fish grounds are going to hold fish through December. One, one thing that's really interesting about them, too, and this was um, Kevin Gould I was talking to about this. And he said, when you are scaling down your tuna lures, you want to make sure you're scaling down your leader as yes, well. Yes, absolutely. He said, because one, the heavier leader and, and you know, that big swivel to the uh, split ring connection, that's going to affect how it swims. And also, you know, that big bulky leader in front of a small lure, it just doesn't fish yeah. right. So. If you are seeing really picky fish, consider scaling down to that 40 pound test. You know, most guys probably start with, I'd say 80 is probably the stand, is, is, is the starting ground. Yeah, and then 80 maybe, down maybe, to 60. Maybe down to 60, maybe up to 100 if they're if they're really big fish. Yep. And then 60 to 40. And then if, uh, you know, if yeah. all else fails, go to 30 and just. Uh, so from those smaller ones all the way up to the Giants, the Giant game's the same. You know, you're going to bait and wait um, for the most part. Um, yeah, blues, this, blues, I guess, might be thinning out. A little bit last week when the, there were more recreational fish around guys were getting mackerel and drifting with mackerel and ron z's yeah and getting uh, like the one report i heard um my buddy kyle was out with bobby rice and they were drifting mackerel and i think they ended up getting five fish three were on the live baits two were on the ron z's so yeah that's a great stra strategy too you're drifting baits and those were all recreational fish 50 to 60 inches yeah i mean that's that's basically a, a common you know move is to get off the off the i guess uh, what are those those northern facing beaches or east facing beaches um you know on the back side of the cape and pick out that you know 100 to 220 uh foot depth and you're basically setting out a couple mackerel um one under a balloon you know one a little further down because granted you're not in real deep water you don't have to have one right off the bottom and then your crew's basically jigging a ron z um you know as the boat drifts and you're just dropping it down to the bottom and try to kind of get a feel for just before it hits the bottom so that you're not getting into the dogfish and losing tails and just work it slowly back up drop it back down do it over and over again i'm just like i remember one trip we were out there and it was it was one like we passed the point of hopelessness like it, we knew we weren't going to feel anything and i like had i had one of my ronzies left i'm like i'm going to sacrifice this just to feel something just so i can and i, I dropped it to the bottom immediately gets chomped by a dogfish but like you get that i don't know that's i, I don't know why were, i'm admitting this There's, but it i thought you were going down the road of bus tossing your buddy jerry oh no we're not going to do I, I don't need to do that anyways I love jerry, uh, so but, that's kind of that play down there now obviously 
keep an eye out for surface feeds. Um, this part of the year, it's always kind of been like a stick bait. Um, the, the best of that is still ahead of us. Yeah. Like, even though things have been kind of, uh, kind of wonky the last couple of weeks with all this weather, the best of the top water bluefin fishing is still coming up. Absolutely. You know, October is a tremendous month for it. We're going to see a lot of that going on, uh, south of the vineyard. I don't know what to expect there. I think that that chunk bite for bluefin should probably continue on the inshore grounds, especially, uh, you know, if that water stays, if there, there's a good water temperature for them, the yellowfin are probably pushing back to the edge. We, we may have seen the last of the inshore yellowfin. Maybe we have get another weather window. You find them in there at, yep. at those same grounds at the dump. But I would guess that those fish are pushing back to the canyons. I think that's a good bet. Um, if you're heading to the canyons, definitely bring butterfish this is the time of year it bring bring some bait to chunk uh sardines are always good to have too yep. but find, find those hard edges on the temp breaks um you know this when it blows like this, this is a good opportunity if you're a fish mapping subscriber you now have access to the free app that is uh, available to all fish mapping subscribers so it allows you to sit home prep your gear and start to play on your phone and kind of pull a game plan together. Uh, it's going to give you all your fish mapping recommendations where you can toggle between species. And ultimately when you do that, it's going to show you the ideal spots in these color coded circles that, you know, will tell you what the best conditions are on the map to go and look for that specific species, which is nice. It's going to give you water temperature, um, chlorophyll, a whole slew of, of information to put, you know, to start stacking that deck uh, to your advantage. So the Canyon game this time of year, it's going to be finding those hard edges, those temp breaks um, and, and getting out is the, is the tough part. And even getting out and finding the, uh, the squid draggers. That's another big play this time of year, especially if you're going out to chunk, find the squid draggers out there. Even if they're up on the flats, get behind them. The tuna will be there eating the discards. That's a good play this time of year. We've been seeing some awesome video just South of, uh, of, of gnomons of boats yeah i mean that's where the giants yeah yeah pulling up to these uh to these draggers and hand feeding giants hooking as many as they want who's it captain steve um steve fernandez was was all over that uh you know i I know damon has been out there enjoying that um fishy pants magoo oh galvin galvin's been uh been yeah the local legend for sure he's been out there uh enjoying that bite and it's it's really if you find it and it's happening you're literally hand feeding you know seven eight hundred pound bluefin like pei style it's pretty cool but for the the people who aren't interested in in, in a giant um that happens like i said in the canyons with the squid draggers i mean that's you're talking scallop draggers with the bluefin yeah inshore yep inshore out offshore with the yellow fin and and sometimes big eye it's squid boats you're getting behind and last year, that really went crazy in mid-October. So we had our Helen H trip down the Hudson Canyon. And we had a decent trip. I think there were 15 fish for the boat. We each got one. That was like October 7th. And then the week after that is when, like, they just had yellowfin apocalypse. Yeah. And down at, boats running out of Jersey, easy limits, hand-feeding yellowfin, Ugh. big eye mixing in. And... My buddy, I remember I was in Disneyland with uh, Disney World with my family, and Jerry Sullivan was out on a boat, sends me a picture. He's like, dude, easy boat limit of yellow fin with a kicker big eye that like came and like they watched it eat the chunk That's bait. That's awesome. Uh, he was fishing with... Voyager? No, no, it, it wasn't a head boat. He was fishing with, I think, Jerry Malanga. Oh, Nice. So he works with Shore Catch Charters with Gene Quigley and that Very whole cool. uh, that whole crew. So down yeah, there. that's that's gonna play out. Um, October is a great month for sword fishing. Um, you know that's that's what to to do while you're chunking at night. Get some sword baits out. Um, now, if you are serious about sword fishing, like our our, our buddy Larry Backman. He will go out and sit out with just the sword baits. Like mm-hmm. the, the chumming and chunking is not as necessary to come across a sword as, at night as it is the tuna. And some some captains think that if you're going to chum, you're going to throw that out there. You're going to attract sharks, which are going to eat your sword baits, yeah. which you're going to be messing with all night. So if you are serious about swords, maybe consider holding back on the chum. If not, if you're looking for act, like the nighttime canyon action is is uh, yeah. And I mean, if, season, if you're so. chunking for tuna, you can always come across a wayward sword. I mean, we saw that happen on the last oh, yeah, year. You set, you set your swordfish uh, rig way back, you know, out, out, you know, you're chunking close to the boat for the tuna. You're sending swordfish baits way out yeah. under floats. I mean, it's, I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, that's it, the best of, best of both worlds right there. Absolutely. With a dead stick Ron Z going right through your, not, not even dead stick, I would hold it, but. Oh, oh dude, I, 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 we I'm, should be going there tomorrow. I, I'm really bummed about that, but. Hopefully we'll get a couple more trips in, probably some local bluefin. 
I'm going to be keeping my eye on uh, maybe a Jersey headboat trip if uh, if I can find a wing- window to get down there. But that was amazing. Like I had the whole weekend free. Like my wife wasn't expecting me to be home. The second it's canceled, like I've already, I'm like taking kid to a birthday party. I'm like, I'm like, pretend I'm not here this weekend, but you are. It like, started uh-huh. going, it started going down that road for me because one of the kids that would come and Eric Doherty was like, Hey, why don't we grab a handpicked select few from this trip that got blown out and go giant fishing on my boat. The weather started to turn, but like with October being so busy. I was like, I can't even fathom oh, well, it right now. That was a big mistake. But, you, you could have just, you could have seamlessly transitioned no, to that. No, I, I, I could have, but that's that window is not closing anytime soon. He's going to fish well into you know December, so we we will get out and do that. Um, he, you know, come with us; it'll be fun. We'll we'll check that giant box. We haven't done that in a while. We haven't, man. And and the giant thing it, that goes into December, like yeah. they are the last ones to leave New England. They're the last ones to leave New Jersey. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they the giants stick around as long as the food's around. They can handle. I mean, they thermoregulate, so they they're, which means you know they're they're technically warm blooded, so they they can keep their body temperature warmer than the uh, surrounding waters. That's one of the how like tuna, are just amazing amazing creatures. So that's why they're able to hang in that like forty eight degree water once we get you know closer to December. Well, I mean, all in all, it's been an incredible year offshore. I mean, the tuna fishing has been as as great as I can remember it and as spread out as you could want it, um, with the exception of the, the smaller fish never really making it into the Cape Cod Bay grounds with any kind of consistency. Um, you know, so if you were mobile and you had a trailer, uh, you could you had an amazing season. If you had a slip, you know, somewhere on the south shore of Massachusetts or north shore hoping for recreational size fish was a little bit of a tougher one. Yeah. But there's still time for that. Stell wagon yeah. is still the small fish on Stell wagon, I think, are yet to show up. I think that's going to happen um, probably the next couple of weeks. So thank you to everybody who tuned in throughout the course of these reports. Thank you for for commenting for uh, even if the comment was about our blood pressure, yeah. uh, <laughs> which I literally it was. Yeah. Cheech is helping that out with his breakfast sandwiches. <laughs> but thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sirius XM Marine. This has been a. Uh this has been a blast to do and be part of, and it's been, you know, made extra special with all the feedback we've gotten from everybody that tunes in week in and week out. Really excited to get back to this next year. I wish we could just fast forward to it, but there's a lot of good stuff in between that happens. But uh, Surf fishing season right now, man. Yeah. We did get a couple comments of people asking us to bring back like striper fishing reports uh, for the fall. I'm going to talk maybe to Matt Hefner, our assistant editor about that, see cool. if he's uh, going to pick them up. But you know, we'll be back every other week with podcasts, uh, more long form videos coming up, plenty of content to keep you uh, keep you going through the fall and winter coming from on the water. Yeah, we, we have some awesome offshore episodes this year, amongst other ones. But the offshore ones kind of just hit different for me. I don't know. Um, Dude, this was one of the great. best years we've had for I mean, last year was great. We had the jigging jigging. Uh, giants with dom then we had our own good day out of the sword but this year we've got top water yellow fin we've got jigging yellow fin and blue fin so some awesome offshore videos coming out it's good stuff man i can't yeah. wait to get into the editing room and uh absolutely get them and out there leaving it on this note if there's anything that you want us to you want to see us do in these you know for next year drop a comment in the uh, comment section. I, you know, I'd like throw to, some ideas out there. I'd like to watch you eat one of those breakfast sandwiches. It sounds like an absolute mess. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> but hey, you got to drown your sorrows one way or another. Jim, it's been fun. Uh, again, special thanks to uh, SiriusXM Marine. Catch you guys next offshore season.